Lord, we just pray for your wisdom today. Pray for your godly perspective as we go about our week, as we go about our day. And as we hear the message today, we just pray that our hearts are open to you and that we receive your word, Lord. We pray for Pastor Sheldon and that you use him as a conduit today, Lord, that your words speak through him. Lord, we also pray for our child care. We, Lord, pray that you're, you build a hedge of protection around our children and that you are in their hearts, Lord, and that, that hedge of protection, Lord, that the evil of the world cannot touch them. We declare this in your name, Lord. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Let's stand and sing. Every song we could ever sing Worthy of all the praise we could ever bring Worthy of every breath we could ever bring We live for you We live for you In Jesus, the name above every other name Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever bring, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you, there is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Jesus, the name above every other name. Jesus, the only one who could ever say, Worthy of every breath we could ever breathe, we live for you. Oh, we live for you. Holy, there is no one like you. There is none beside you. Open up my eyes in wonder and show me who you are and fill me with your heart and lead me in your love to those around me. Well, well, my life upon your love it is a firm foundation and i will put my trust in you alone and i will not be shaken and i will build my life upon your love
Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander, and my faith would be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. And I will call upon you. Keep my eyes above the waves. My soul will rest in your embrace. For I am yours, and you are We'll be taking tithes and offerings during this last song.
hands down Lose my worries in your love Casting every care on you I have carried them enough We're not alone Here within His love Emmanuel He is still with us When the world becomes too much Near the cross I will remain Until every fear is still At the mention of your name We're not in this last part here. Don't be afraid to just reach out and just receive Jesus. Mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, I know your past is broken you can move on it's over now here in the presence of the Lord I know your past is broken you can move on it's over now here in the presence of the lord tired of running running be still and know he's in control here in the presence of the Pour out your heart before him. Open your arms, he'll hold you now. Here in the presence of the Lord. Pour out your heart before him. Open your heart. 
clap your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord, mercy is falling, falling. Lift up your hands, receive it now. Here in the presence of the Lord. Dear Lord, we thank you for everything that you've, you've already provided. Thank you for being a, a generous, a gracious, a loving, a redeeming, a forgiving God. Thank you for, for everything that we have. Thank you for the rain for the farmers. And, and some, Lord, is, is, yeah, they were out trying to work the fields, but then they ended up with the rain, so they had to stop. But, Lord, that rain will sustain them through. It will help them come through. And, Lord, um, we just we thank you so very much for the rain you've given us. Our ground is still very wet. And so we would, if, if, we, if it would be according to your will, Lord, we would, be, we would really appreciate some more rain, dear Lord, because, because Lord, it's the, the ground is really dry yet. Our aquifers are low. Our rivers are low. But, Lord, I'm not telling you anything you don't know. So, Lord, just if we can have a say in that, we would ask that we could have some more rain. Lord, uh, um, we, we thank you for everything. that We, we have our health. We have, we have our, our freedoms. We have our lives, dear Lord. We have, we have our children and our, our, our mothers and our fathers. We have, we have all these blessings, dear Lord. You've given us breath. You've given us a pulse. You've given us opportunities, and they're all before us today. And, Lord, I just ask that you lift each and every one of us up and walk us through this day that we would see your opportunities, we would, your opportunities would be revealed clearly to us, and that we would not reject your opportunities, dear Lord, that instead we would embrace those opportunities and move forward with them. Dear Lord, we ask for your healing hand, not only on, our, on, on Johnny um, as, as he's um, battling the, the crud, the, the COVID crud, uh, but also, Lord, on anyone else, uh, the gentleman who lives down the street from them and... and, and um, the heart that Johnny has because Johnny asked that we would pray for his neighbors. Even though he's in the midst of COVID, his neighbors just had all that, that blood work. He doesn't know their name, but they just had uh, all them blood clots in their legs, dear Lord, which was a result of the COVID. And Lord, so we just ask that you just heal them. We don't, uh, you know who we're talking about, dear Lord. You know who we're talking about. We're, you know who's in, in the ICU. You know, dear Lord, and we just lift them up. The name that you know, we lift up to you, and we ask that you would be with them and walk them through this too. And we ask that anyone, whether no matter what crud they got going on, no matter what car accident, whatever it was, dear Lord, anyone that's connected to us, dear Lord, we, it, we, we just ask that you would have your hand on them, you would lift them up, you'd heal them, you'd help us to know how we can reach out and help them, dear Lord, how we can be your hands and feet to them, dear Lord. Ask that you help us to be the servants the servant hearts, the washers of feet that you desire for us to be. We ask that you help us to do that. Lord, we ask that this message, this message would be blessed, that this would be your message, your message, not my message. This, is, this message would be delivered only through me, not by me, but it would not be mine, it would be yours. Lord, I ask that you open each and every heart, every heart that's in here, dear Lord, I ask you to crack it wide open and make it receptive, fertile soil for the message that you have here today, for the seed you're about to plant, dear Lord. Dear Lord, we ask that, that you, would, you would fend off, you would send away Satan, that he could have no foothold. Satan, you have no foothold here. Jesus said by his name, by his blood, by his redeeming blood, by his victory over the grave, that we could command you out, and Satan, we command you out right now. Satan, you have no place here. You must leave. You must leave right now. And, and Lord, as, as we feel Satan leaving, as we feel him, as he's been commanded, he has to leave. He cannot stay. And Satan, you can't stay in this building. You can't stay in these hearts. You can't stay in these minds. You must go. 
And Lord, as, as, as he's escorted off the property, Lord, we ask that you would fill us, you would fill each and every one of them voids, you just overflow those voids with your Holy Spirit. That our hearts would be filled and we would feel that refreshment, we would feel that, that water of life that you're pouring into us, dear Lord. And that seed would be protected and nourished, dear Lord. Lord, we ask for your hand that this message would not die today. It would not die in this room, not for even a single person, but that each and every one of us, as we walk out of here, we would go and be the church where we're supposed to be the church at. This isn't the church, Lord. This is just a gathering place. This is just a building. This is your bride within your building. And as we leave, we ask, I ask that you would not allow any of us to give up on your message, your word today. That we would not be able to reject it, but instead we would have to go out. We would be compelled to live it out in the world where we're supposed to go live it out. Just as your son did. Lord, we, we lift these things up to you and we also come to you with the prayer that your son taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, and thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. 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 What a God blessed morning we had. I'm just I'm 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 excited. I'm thankful. I'm so grateful for for this series so far, for this year so far, for, for everything that God's put before us that, that's brought us to this point. So I got a question for you. Over the last couple of weeks, over the last couple of weeks, have, have you learned anything? Have you learned anything about your identity in Jesus Christ? Have you learned anything about your identity in God? Have we learned anything? Oh, my Lord, nobody. There's not a hand went up. Oh, I'm here alone. Oh, no, isn't it cool? Isn't it amazing some of the things we've been learning, how, how we've learned who we truly are in Jesus Christ? Not who we think we are, but who God says we are. Isn't that some amazing stuff? Two weeks ago, we learned about us being uh, His masterpiece, crafted, molded, made, and stitched together in our mother's womb. Mothers, thank you once again. Stitched together in our mother's womb. The masterpiece of the Master. The masterpiece of our God. And then last week we talked about how we're, we're ambassadors. We, just, we looked at that, discovered how we're ambassadors, ambassadors of God, ambassadors of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ sends us out into the world to be his reflection to the world. He sent us out. He sends us out today to go and be him to those around us, those he brings around us, and those he brings us around. And today, today we're going to look at us as conquerors and overcomers in Jesus Christ and through Jesus Christ and through what he did for us. It's just amazing. There, there's nothing, there's nothing, when we, as we're going to look at this today, and there's nothing, there's nothing we can't overcome. There's nothing we can't conquer. Nothing through Jesus Christ. Now, can I do it on my own? Absolutely not. In fact, I could booger things up really bad on my own. I guarantee I did it this week. I guarantee I've done it every week. I guarantee I probably have done it every day. When I go to stand on my own two feet, and I, I, I start walking, and I'm like, whoa, hey, hey, yeah, would you come along with me, please? Right? Lead me. Right? There's those days we do it, don't we? <laughs> we do that. We do. But through Jesus Christ, through his blood, through what he did in the on the cross and through the grave, through what he did, he gives us the power. We are overcomers and we are conquerors. In fact, we, you are more than conquerors. You are more than conquerors. Romans 8, 31, 39. Actually, you know, I want, I want you to remember this. You are conquerors, right? So I want you, I want you to turn to your neighbor. 
and just go, victorious. Just, oh, really? Victorious. Are we victorious or not? We should be celebrating. We're victorious, right? Now you all are going, well, the pastor's whacked, but we're victorious. That's good. So, you know, that's all right. Romans 8, 31 through 39 says, What then shall we say in response to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all, how will he not also along with him graciously give us all things? Who will bring any charge against those whom God has chosen? It is God who justifies. Who then is the one who condemns? No one. Christ Jesus who died, more than that, who was raised to life, is at the right hand of God and is also interceding for us. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Shall trouble or hardship or persecution or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, for your sake we, we face death all day long. We are considered as sheep to be slaughtered. No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loves us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor depth, nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Now, I don't know about you, but to me, there's a whole lot of victory in that. There's a whole lot of victory in that. Me by myself, I'm not victorious. But me in Christ, well, all kinds of victorious. There's a whole lot of wins in there. There's a whole lot of life in there. There's a whole lot of power in there. It's not through our power, because we will mess it up through our own power. But it is through the power of Jesus Christ. It's through what he did. It says, what, what can separate us from God, from the love of God? Nothing. Nothing could separate us from the love of God. Nothing could separate us from what Jesus Christ went to that cross and did. Nothing. The only thing that could separate you is if you reject him. Nothing could separate us. You still won't be separated from his love because he's still going to love you even if you reject him. Nothing can separate us from him. Now, you know, we have, we have these little struggles, right, um, as Americans. Um, as you know. You've heard me talk before. <laughs> um, we're spoiled. We don't have persecution here. We have a bunch of whining. We don't have persecution. This isn't China. This isn't the Middle East. We, we don't have persecution. We, don't, we, we, we perceive that we have persecution, but we don't have persecution. We're spoiled babies here. And we're spoiled downwater Christians here. I'm just being honest with you. I'm just being honest. I got to tell you that, that that we're not in that we're not China, we're not the Middle East, we're not any of that right now. But it's not too far off, folks. Our country continues down the path it's been going down. We're not very far from it. When we have a country that the leaders won't even come together for a few minutes even of prayer together on the national day of prayer, we reject our leaders, reject coming together. We won't come together at the foot of the throne. This country's going the wrong direction. Our leaders are going the wrong direction, and they should not be our leaders. I'm just being honest. Jesus Christ is our leader. God is our leader. These leaders who won't even come before our Lord on one day a year, even for just a little bit, this country is not a nation under God. This country has walked away from God. That doesn't mean that everybody has walked away. But this country, this nation, we claim, we stick our heads in the sand, we go, oh, we're one nation under God. We're blessed. God's pulling his hand off of us. And he's going to continue to pull his hand off of, off of us as we continue to reject him and aren't even willing to come to the foot of his throne. We won't even talk with him. And I could go off on that all day long. But that's for a different day. Because today... We're talking about conquerors and overcomers. 
Paul says we're more than over, more than conquerors. He says we're more than conquerors. We, we define conquer as a winner or a, a, a victor, right? And so, but the Greek word for conquer is nikau. Nikau, nikau. <laughs> um, and so, nikau, N-I-K-A-O. That's what it's, it, but it's pronounced nikau. And it means, it means to be victorious, okay? That's the Greek word for victor, uh, for conquer. Um, but, um, the, the word that Paul uses here is actually the word he used in this scripture is hooper knee cow. So like basketball player, hooper knee cow, right? And so I, some of you are visual. So, um, but hooper knee cow, I just want to make it easy for you to remember, right? Just in case some people like to remember those words. But this literally means to conquer, to destroy beyond recognition. Hooper knee cow. That's who Paul says. That's what the word he used. I want you to help you remember this. I want you to turn to your neighbor and say, Hooper knee cow. All right, we had some we had some oomph on her today. We got so there we go. So so it's not as this is not this is a victory beyond victories. This is a victory so your your enemy was decimated. That's what Hooper Nikau means, and that's what Paul says. That's what he's sharing here, is that that's the kind of victors we are. It's not a squeak by one, just by a nick of the, you know, by a last second shot. It wasn't a, it wasn't a one point. It wasn't a, a Rocky Balboa and, and Apollo Creed fight where, you know, Rocky gets pummeled for nine rounds and, and just a thread from dead for nine rounds. And then the 10th round, oh, here we come, you know, and da, 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 you know, all that stuff. And, uh, you know, it's not that. He's all beat up, bru- bloody, bru- bruised, puffy face, you know. At the end, he's got brain damage going on. And he's, by, by a thread, he wins the, the match. He gets lucky, really. And, and, uh, but, but, you know, and he's uh, hollering out, oh, Adrian, you know. It's not that kind. I just barely won, Adrian, but I won. It's not that. It's uh, we pummeled him. You can't even recognize the devil. You can't even recognize who our enemy was. We pummeled him. We lowered the boom. We dropped the bomb. They're done. Right? That's what we're talking about here. It's kind of like the, the Egyptians versus the Israelites, chasing the Israelites, right? The, 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 the Israelites get to the Red Sea. God parts the sea. The, they go through. They're safe on dry ground all the way through. Everyone makes it. The Egyptians all get in the path, and God says, Hooper Nikau! And he slams the water shut and wipes out the entire, he annihilates the entire army. Hooper Nikau. It's like uh, um, um, Gideon and the Midian, Midianites. And, and uh, that, that, that whole thing where Gideon says, he turns to God and he says, I'm afraid. You know, he's like, oh, I don't know, we're going to lose, I don't know. we're going to die. God's like, no, you're one of my mighty men of valor. You might not understand it yet, but you're one of my mighty men of valor. And Gideon's like, but I only have 32,000 men. I only have 32,000 soldiers. And God's like, you know what, you're right. You got 32,000 soldiers. And if I leave you with 32,000 soldiers, I will get no glory. They will think you did it. So he whittles down Gideon's army to 300, and they slaughter the Midianites. And to God be the glory. To God be the glory. Hooper, Nikau. They didn't just take down a couple of the Midianites, and then they were like, well, this kind of hurts. We don't want to do this no more. It was they wiped them out, eliminated, decimated. That's what we're talking about. That's what Paul's talking about. That's the kind of conquerors we are through Jesus Christ, through him. Now, does that mean life's going to be easy peasy? Oh, it's just life's just so peachy. Jesus is my Jesus. Life's peachy. Nothing ever goes wrong. Doesn't mean that at all, does it? In fact, Jesus told us it doesn't mean that because he said, what? We're going to have some troubles, right? Right? Revelation, uh, um, John 16, 30, 33, I mean, says, I have told you these things so that in, in me you may have peace. In this world you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Think about that. In order for us to be conquerors, we have to have something to conquer, don't we? Because otherwise we're just a bunch of people. And, oh, we won. <laughs> well, no, actually the, the opponent never showed up. 
right? You didn't win anything. You have to have someone to conquer or something to conquer in order to be conquerors. We will experience trouble. Jesus told us we, we, you're going to experience. He never said, well, you might. Maybe sometime there might be some issues. You might have a little wrinkle in the plan. He said, you will have trouble, but don't fear because guess what? I've already overcome the trouble. And if you are in me, you will be an overcomer of that trouble as well. It's already been won. Jesus already eliminated it. We just have to not be afraid. We have to be willing to step forward in Jesus Christ. And become conquerors. You are an overcomer. You are an overcomer. You and I, we are overcomers in Christ. Through Jesus Christ, through his blood, through him, we have his power. Through him, through, through his victory over the grave. Through his victory over Satan, through his victory over sin, through his redemption, through our relationship with him, he has made us overcomers. We have become overcomers. And according to Revelations 12, we'll overcome the evil one by the blood of the lamb and by the word of our testimony. Revelations 12, 11 says, and they overcame him by the blood of the lamb and by the word of their testimony. And they did not love their lives to the death. So you are an overcomer by the blood of the lamb. You're an overcomer, were an overcomer by the blood of the lamb. And who's that lamb? It's Jesus Christ, isn't it? Absolutely, it's the son of God. The perfect, unblemished sacrifice for you and for I. Jesus shed his blood, and through his blood, through his blood, our sins are forgiven. Through his blood, through his victory, we have access to the very throne room of God. We have access to that. We don't have to go through anyone else. You don't have to come to me and go, well, pastor, would you go and talk to God for me? We have access to his throne room. We have full access to God himself. Through Jesus' blood. And what he did on that cross, his victory over death, through that we have redemption. We are redeemed from the empty way of life that we've been living. We're redeemed from it. Through his blood, we are protected from the evil one. We're protected from Satan. We were able to command Satan out of our bodies, out of our hearts, out of our minds. We're able to do that. We're able to evict him from this building because of the blood of Jesus Christ. And Jesus gave us that power through the cross. We have the power to heal our bodies. We have the power to heal our bodies, our spirits. We have the power to, to heal our relationships. The problem is people don't believe it. People fail to believe that we have healing power. Jesus Christ had healing power. Jesus Christ had healing power, and he healed consistently, nonstop, was healing. Whether physically, spiritually, relationally, whatever it was, continual healing. And he passed that power on to us through his death on the cross, through his victory over the grave, through his blood. And you and I have that power. We have that power. There's power in the blood of Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen to that? Right? I mean, come on, right? I mean, wow. The power we have, and we, we foolishly throw it away. We foolishly, because we don't get it. We don't believe it. In our watered-down Christian way of life in this country, we're like, oh, yeah, that's just no. I just, I hope. I hope that things go well. Why well, hope when you can pray? And if you believe it, if you believe it, then you have the power of Jesus Christ. You have the power to heal. You have the power to repair. If you'll believe it. But we reject it. So let's stop rejecting it. Because we're overcomers by the blood of Jesus Christ. We're overcomers by the perfect lamb. 
You're an overcomer by the word of your testimony. It said, and the word of their testimony. You are an overcomer by the word of your testimony. So what is that? Simply put, the word of your testimony is who is God to you? What has he done within you? What has he done through you? What's he continued to do with you? What's he empowered you to do? What have you been willing to embrace the power of? What have you been willing to believe he gave you the power to do? What have you been, what, I, what has he done? Because we can reject him all day long. And if you have no testimony of who God is in your life, it's because you've rejected him. If you have not been able to see God working through you, and we should be seeing that every day. If you cannot see God working through you, if your testimony is, well, I don't know, there was that one time someone said. If that's your testimony, you don't have a testimony because you've not embraced what God has given us. You have not embraced why Jesus went to that cross. I'm just being honest. So if it stings and you're thinking, well, last year, there was last year that one time. If you got to go to last year, you're not living the life God's called you to live. You're just not. Through your testimony, you're an overcomer. See, there was this, there was this kid this little youngster by the name of David went up and talked to King Saul one day. And when he went up to see Saul and his boys were his, his, his mighty men of valor, right, his army, they, they were afraid of this one guy across the valley, this one guy named Goliath. And what's David do? David walks up and he says, hey, King, um, I'll go get him. I'll take him down. And King Saul says, come on, buddy. It's a cute story. I'm glad you got you're, you're brave, but you should go back home, play with your sheep, and play with your little toy soldiers. This is men's stuff. And David said, I don't think you get it. I don't think you get it. Here's the thing. When the lion came to attack my sheep, came to kill my sheep, God delivered that lion to me, and I killed it. When the bear came to kill my sheep, God delivered that bear to me, and I killed it. And God will deliver that Philistine giant over there to me, and I will kill him. You don't get it. See, you guys think that that Philistine's some big dude. You think he's too big to handle. I say he's about the perfect size target. Give me a rock. Let's go to town. My God is far bigger than that Goliath. My God's far bigger than that giant. Why? Because he was an overcomer. And he had a testimony. And he knew this was before Jesus. He wasn't going off the blood of the Lamb. He was living in faith and confidence in his God, our God, the God. He knew and understood and embraced the power of our God. And he knew God would use him to do what God desired to have done. And he wasn't afraid. He wasn't afraid to speak out. Oh, King Saul, well, there's this guy. I think he'll help me out with this. No, he said, my God. My God delivered that lion. My God delivered that bear. My God will deliver that filthy Philistine into my hands, and I will kill him. See, we all have these giants. We have these giants, and we're we got these things that are going on around us, and it's like, oh, this is my Goliath. And we're afraid of it, and we walk away from it. We run away from it. We cower. We hide in the corner. We all have our giants. But if we would just understand, through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the love of our God, through the power that he gives us, that giant is not bigger than you. You can slay your giant. And God desires for you to slay your giant. When I talk about opportunities, God lays out opportunities before us today. There's going to be some giants in there. Guess what? God's already overcame that giant. God's already prepared you for that giant. All you have to do is be willing to step forward onto the battlefield and destroy, take down that giant. Goliath doesn't get to win. 
if you got God on your side. The question is, do you have God on your side? And that's not because he would step away, but because we would cower in a corner. There's giants out there. You're going to face them. And you also can defeat them if you will just believe, have faith, step forward in the power that Jesus Christ gives us. Trust in our God, and you'll slay the Philistine every time. That's who we are. That's who we are. We're overcomers. We're overcomers through the blood of Jesus Christ, not through the... Through, through what we do, not through us, but through God and through what Jesus has done for us, the power he gives us, through the blood of the Lamb. That's, that's where our power comes from. That's how come we're overcomers. It's not who we're going to be. It's who we already are if we'll embrace it and we'll accept it and we'll believe it and we'll have faith in it. It's who we are. We're already overcomers. We're already conquerors. But we have to believe it and step forward into it. Let us not run from the battle. It's only a giant. We have a God who makes a giant look really tiny. We have a God, you can't even see the giant by comparison to the God that we got, by the power that we got. You can't even see him. We're overcomers. Will we embrace that? Will we step forward to that? Some of us really struggle to believe it, and I need you, I need you to understand. I don't, no, I don't need you. You need you to understand and believe you have the same power. You are an overcomer. You can defeat every Goliath in your life. If you'll allow Jesus Christ to go before you and fight the fight for you and be the overcomer before you, if you'll step forward in faith in our Lord and Savior, If you'll do that, I want you to repeat after me. I am an overcomer by the blood of the Lamb and and the words of my testimony. Do not, do not, do not be afraid to share your testimony. You do not have that relationship, if you're afraid to share Jesus Christ with those around you, if you're afraid to share what God's done because, oh, they might call me a Jesus freak or Bible thumper, if you're afraid to share your testimony, you cannot embrace the power that God's got for you. You have to be willing. You have to understand. He is my God, and I'm proud. I'm proud, and I'm amazed, and I am awestruck by my God. And my God has already kicked your butt. My God is victorious, and I'm a conqueror and an overcomer through my God, and I will tell the world, I will tell the world, I will tell the world what my God has done in me, through me, and with or without me. We're overcomers by the blood of the Lamb and conquerors through Jesus Christ, through his victory. We're overcomers through the blood of the Lamb and conquerors through Jesus' victories. Psalm 18, 29 says this. It says, with your help, I can advance against a troop. With my God, I can scale a wall. Let me help you with that translation. I use NIV a lot, okay? Um, If you go to some of the others, um, that will say, instead of I can advance against a troop, it'll say, I can defeat an army. I can defeat an army. I can defeat an army. Not we. It doesn't say our army can defeat an army. It says I can defeat an army. Right? Through God. Through God, right? With my God, I can scale a wall. What's that mean? We are conquerors. If we defeat an army, what are we doing? We're conquering. We're conquerors, and I can scale a wall. What are we doing? We're overcoming. So we can conquer and overcome, according to Psalms. Psalm 18, 29. So yes, we, we, are, we are masterpieces made by our, our God's hand, his own hand, our creator's hand, knit together. Man, he knew us when all we were is this cell and that cell come together. Hello. He knew us at that. He knew us. 
And from that point on, he's been creating us. He's been knitting us together. We are his masterpiece. You don't get to be any better masterpiece than that. We're also God's ambassadors. We have the privilege, the opportunity to go out and be Jesus to the world. And when those people come to the gas buy down, they're going to see Jesus. If you're not going to bring Jesus with you, if Jesus is not going to be the face you are wearing, if that's not who you're going to reflect that day, I don't want you there. I'm just being honest. Because when they come, they're going to see Jesus. They're going to see people who love them, people who care about them, people who will serve them, wash their feet. We get the privilege, the opportunity to be ambassadors for the kingdom. We have the opportunity to be ambassadors for God. We get the opportunity to be a reflection of Jesus Christ. And we are also conquerors and overcomers through Jesus Christ through his blood, through his sacrifice, through what he's done for us, what he did for us 2,000 years ago, what was planned long before that. Je- Jesus coming, what, what, that wasn't a new thing. It wasn't all of a sudden, oh, wait, we're at zero B.C. Oh, well, I guess we've got to do something. Oh, let's enter Jesus. It wasn't, oh, look at the calendar. Oh, guess we've got to put Jesus in there now. That wasn't an afterthought. That was the plan all along. Our God's not surprised by anything. He's not surprised that you have the power to be an overcomer and a conqueror. He's not surprised by it. Unfortunately, many of us are. Let us go to our Lord. Dear Lord, thank you so very much. Thank you very much, Lord. I ask that you would help us. Help us. Help us to receive, understand, believe, have faith in. The fact that we're conquerors, we're overcomers. Lord, help us to remember, to to know, to embrace the fact that we're your masterpiece. You knit us together. I'm just like, that is so cool. That's amazing. You you cared so much to be there from the very beginning, and now today we have so many men who don't even want to be in the house, don't want to be a part of the relationship. Why? You're pregnant, I'm out. God, you were there, you were there, you created us, you knit us together, you be oh, we're your masterpiece. Help us to get that. Help us to understand that. We get to be your ambassador. Father, I ask that you help us to, to embrace that, that we would want to go and be Jesus to the world. That we'd want to listen to your Holy Spirit. That we'd, we'd beg your Holy Spirit to lead us and guide us. You'd beg your Holy Spirit. Please put another opportunity before me. Father, I ask that you help us to, to embrace that. Embrace being your ambassadors. And Father, when it comes to, to battle with the giants of this world, when it comes to battle with the enemy, the enemy who rules this world, and unfortunately we're seeing it more and more, how much more he's ruling And people are cowering and running away and hiding. Father, I ask that you would please, please strengthen us, encourage us, embolden us to be willing to step out and be conquerors and overcomers, to be who you desire us to be, to be who Jesus already laid the groundwork for us to be, to be willing to go forward and overcome what Jesus already overcame. Father, I ask that we would not, we would not hold back, but instead step forward. That we'd live the life, the life you created and designed us to live, the life you desire for us to live, that our hearts would be broken. That our hearts would be broken, that we would become. Maybe, maybe our hearts are broken now because we haven't been who we should have been. But Lord, I ask that you break our hearts that we would step forward now and be exactly who you've called us to be. Exactly who you've called us to be. Not for us, but for the kingdom. Not for us, but for you, Father. Father, I'm so thankful, so thankful for the mothers. I'm thankful for the mothers. I'm thankful for Mother Mary. I'm thankful for our Redeemer, who she bore, that she said, she didn't argue with you. She said, okay, what you want me to do? And she just stepped forward. 
She knew the potential risk and harm and, and persecution she could face, but, Lord, she didn't care. She stepped forward. She said, okay, I'm yours. Do with me as you will. Jesus came and he said, Father, he's in the garden when he was struggling, because we all struggle. And in, in, in his humanity, in that moment, he said, Father, if you could take this cup from me, it would be great. But, Lord, Dad, Pops, not my will, but thy will be done. Not my will, but your will. Father, I ask you to help us right now. We've been shirking. We've been pulling back. Father, I ask you right now, help us come before you and say, hey, Lord, I'm so sorry. I've been, I've been failing. I've been blowing it. Father, help, help me to step forward, forward now. I step forward now. I, 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 as Gideon didn't know, he was a mighty man of valor. I, I don't, didn't know I was a mighty person of valor. Father, help, help me to step forward and be that person of valor. Help me not to be afraid of Goliath, but instead to defeat and decimate Goliath. Hooper, Nikau. Your words are not minced, Lord. Your words aren't used for frill and fluff. They're used for encouragement, uplifting, for purpose, for kingdom purpose. And Father, I ask you to help us to embrace them. Help us to move forward with a Hooper Nikau mindset and heart set. Father, I thank you. Thank you so very much for the mothers. I ask you to lift them up today and, and warm their hearts. I ask you to overflow them with your spirit. Let them know how incredible and how precious they are. Lord, help us not to forget our mothers. Help us not to forget our spouses. Help us not to forget our kids who might be mothers. Help us not to forget them, but to thank them for being willing to say, here I am. And we just pray all these things in your loving Son, Jesus Christ's name. Amen. Amen. Next week, we've had, we've had some, it's been some pretty good stuff this series. Next week, we're going to learn about salt and light. And so I just encourage you, Invite someone to come along with you. I love seeing guests here. I love seeing people that we've seen before, maybe haven't been here for a while. But next week, invite someone brand new. Someone you've not invited. That they too can learn who they are, who they are and whose they are in Christ. Invite someone to come along. I know, not everyone's going to take the invitation, right? But invite them anyway. And what I find really works well is when you say, guess what, I'll pick you up at quarter of ten. <laughs> and then they're like, crud, I said I'd go. Now I can't use the excuse my car didn't start, <laughs> right? I'm just saying. But invite them. Would you want to be the only salt and light in your life? I don't believe you would. Let's help them realize the salt and light that they can be in Christ. God bless. I love you. gesture of your hand, the waves of fear collapse in your command. I know tomorrow when the pressure rushes in, you'll be there to rescue me again. What am I?